Hello, my name is Kestra Michaud and I live in Melbourne, Florida. I come from a family of artists. Mom is a painter, dad's a photographer, and my sister is a graphic designer. And I myself have been making art since before I can remember. I discovered fabric as an artistic medium back in 2004 when I was 15 years old and it was love at first scissor cut. I made fabric pictures throughout high school and college where I graduated from Ringling College of Art and Design with honors in 2010. In total, I made fabric pictures for 13 years without ever realizing I was using a fairly standard quilting technique called fused applique until I discovered art quilting in 2017. That was pretty mind blowing to me, I have to say. I bought a sewing machine in 2018 and I have been quilting ever since. My favorite subject is steampunk, which is Victorian science fiction. I have an entire steampunk world in my head, and I like to think about the characters, what they're doing, and what stuff is going on in their world to get ideas for my quilts. Morning Commute is one of these scenes. As the name implies, Morning Commute captures a very mundane event, a man on his way to work. My steampunk city has a similar program to the bike rental services offered in places like New York and Miami except this service rents kites, flying machines, like the one the man in my quilt is using. The R-A-K on the flag stands for rent a kite. You're probably wondering why such a lackluster event, some guy's commute to work, is worthy of a quilt. Why not instead show an action scene, something with a hero fighting a monster to save the city? The answer has to do with a pet peeve I have about superhero movies. Superhero movies focus on the hero, obviously, but rarely, if ever, show what's happening behind the scenes. Who cleans the bathrooms? Who delivered breakfast in the morning? Who designs their logos? There's an entire support network of people that's entirely ignored in superhero movies because they're not exciting. And yet the workers and drones are the people ensuring society functions and the superheroes get to do their thing. That's what Morning Commute is about. My guy is just a nameless worker on the way to his job that he and the other workers he represents are vital to maintaining a stable society. And that makes him quilt worthy. So this quilt started as a vision in my mind's eye, but to make a vision a reality, I needed some reference. Perspective is one of the hardest things for me to draw. So I needed some photographs to help me get it correct. The problem was that the flying machine doesn't exist. So neither do photos of one. And for the bridge, I looked at hundreds of bridge photos and none of them were the right angle or the right look I had in mind. So that meant I had to create my own reference photos. I used a program called Flowscape, which is a 3D world creator software. I arranged objects within the software to look like the bridge I had in my head. I adjusted the lighting, positioned the camera, and took a screenshot. I used a dragon as a placeholder for the flying machine just to get the perspective of the wings. That screenshot was my starting point. Next, I drew a foggy background in Procreate, a raster-based drawing app on my iPad, and used Photoshop to combine it with the bridge and the dragon. This was my proof of concept. Once I saw the composite image, I knew my idea would work. I sent the background to Spoonflower for printing, and I started drawing the scene by hand in a different drawing app on my iPad. I use concepts for all of my line work because it's a vector-based app, which allows for far more editing capability than is possible with raster drawings. So I drew the man, flying machine, and bridge in concepts, exported an SVG, took the file into Adobe Illustrator, and made a full-size, full-color template for my quilt. At this point, I was ready to start picking fabrics. Using the colors in the template, I made little paper tickets to match to the fabrics. Both the value and the color had to match, but using the tickets, it's far easier than trying to do it all by eye. Each fabric was backed by Wonder Under, my fusible of choice, and treated with a solution to prevent fraying. Once dry, the fabrics were ready to cut. There are 958 pieces of fabric making up the bridge, man, and flying machine in this quilt, and my Cricut Explore Air 2 cut every single one. Once cut, the next step was to put them all back together according to the template. I printed the template full size, covered it with a clear non-stick pressing sheet. Each piece was assigned a number way back at the beginning of this process, 
So to assemble the picture, I simply matched each cut piece of fabric to its number on the template and ironed it in place. I did that for all 958 pieces. Then came the really scary part, the stitching. This is the first quilt I've ever designed that required the stitching to tell some of the story. I wanted the part of the bridge hidden by mist to be stitched only, as well as all the swirls in the sky. I had, I'd had well more than a decade of experience designing fabric pictures by then, but only two years of sewing practice. So I was pretty intimidated to start the quilting. The quilt sandwich laid on my work table for a solid week, silently judging me before I finally worked up the nerve to put needle to fabric. And from there on out though, the whole thing was on rails. I just kept going until it was done. I got the binding on and photographed it the day of the entry deadline, which is pretty much par for the course with me. One last fun fact, the background is upside down. I designed this quilt to have the light coming from above, but I made a mistake when I started putting the quilt sandwich together and accidentally laid the bridge down on top of the light area. Having the light come from the bottom suddenly gave the picture an otherworldly feel that was completely missing from my original design. I went back into Flowscape to check what moving the light source would do to the shadows, made a few adjustments to the bridge and man to help the new lighting make sense, and kept the upside down background. That's it. Thanks for watching.